Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at the 2016 movie titled The Birth of a Nation from writer, director, and star Nate Parker. This story takes place back in the 1800s and is based on the true story of a literate slave and preacher named Nat Turner. His owner is struggling financially, but soon sees the money-making potential in using Nat as a traveling preacher of sorts. Other plantation owners are paying him good money to bring Nat to their slaves to preach a message of peace and obedience as a way of keeping them under control and quelling any thoughts of rebellion. And Nat, for a slave, has lived a relatively decent life up to this point. His master treats him fairly well. He was been taught how to read, which was incredibly rare back in those days. And it's not really until he becomes this traveling preacher and journeys to these other plantations throughout the South that he realizes just how badly his fellow slaves have it. And the more slaves Nat preaches to, the more atrocities he witnesses, and finally he decides he's had enough of this and it is his duty before God to start a rebellion. And this led to a massive slave revolt, and lots of people died. So it certainly was an interesting move for Mr. Parker to borrow the name of D.W. Griffith's 1915 silent film. And for those of you who may not be aware, the original The Birth of a Nation was very well known for its groundbreaking, at the time, filmmaking techniques, and it is considered a historically significant film, and was also the highest grossing film for quite some time until it was finally dethroned by Gone with the Wind. It's also basically a Ku Klux Klan propaganda piece. So on the one hand, it is an important artifact of film history, but on the other... Ooh, the word problematic does not begin to describe this. The 2016 Birth of a Nation is pretty much the polar opposite in terms of its message, and borrowing the same title is a pretty big fuck you to the original, and, you know, I kind of have to respect that. Now, while I was watching this movie, I inevitably found myself comparing it to 12 Years a Slave due to the similar subject matter, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that regard. Both movies focus on the atrocities of slavery and show just how fucking horrible that period of our country's history was. Now, in my opinion, 12 Years a Slave is the far superior film. Birth of a Nation is not bad, but it's nowhere near the quality of 12 years, and I do not expect this to get nearly as much recognition as that film. Parker does make some questionable decisions here and there. Most of the movie is basically a Nat Turner biopic, covering his early life and learning how to read, becoming a preacher, getting married, and this and that. And by the time we get to the actual slave revolt, which I'm sure is what most people who see this movie are coming there to see, the movie's almost over. I don't think it lasts more than 15, 20 minutes. And every once in a while, Parker sticks in these really weird dream sequences, which are not really badly done. They just feel very much out of place compared to the rest of the movie. This is Parker's first movie, and I kind of get the feeling that he's still trying to figure out exactly what he wants his filmmaking style to be, because he's doing a little bit of everything. Now, while the movie has its problems, it does have a lot working for it as well. Uh, the acting is incredibly solid across the board. Uh, Parker's directing may need some work, but his acting was great. I thought he did a fantastic job as Nat Turner. Army Hammer plays Samuel, his master, and he does a fantastic job. Penelope Ann Miller plays Army Hammer's mother, and she's the one who ultimately teaches Nat how to read. She's great. Jackie Earl Haley plays a slave catcher, and man, he is a first-class asshole in this movie. He is vile. And, I mean, he plays it very well, but god damn. It, it makes it all the more satisfying when Parker finally kills him towards the end of the movie. And don't call that a spoiler, because as soon as this character shows up on screen, you know there's only one way it can end. The movie does have some very powerful moments, and some very sobering moments, quite frankly. Um, it's not all doom and gloom. There's a few moments of comic relief here and there, and they're pretty well done, but... There are also some moments that will make you realize just how terrible the 1800s were. Because I mean, when you have a slave who is refusing to eat because he's just given up on life, 
and because his master can't afford to lose another slave, he's chiseling out his teeth so he can stick a funnel in his mouth and force feed him. Yeah, it's, um, it's more than a little unsettling. Now, one thing I found interesting about the portrayal of Nat Turner in this movie is he doesn't start his rebellion right away after witnessing what his fellow slaves are going through on the other plantations. He doesn't even start it after his wife is brutally beaten and, while they don't come out and say it, it's implied that she's also raped. Uh something that may or may not have actually happened. Details about Turner's history are a bit sketchy, and we don't even know for certain if he was married or if said marriage was voluntary. And based on what I've read online, the story of his wife getting beaten and raped seems to be something that was invented purely for the movie. And given Mr. Parker's history with rape, and I will just let you Google that on your own, Seems a bit of a questionable decision there. Like, I really don't know what the fuck he was thinking. That's, that was a bad call. But getting back to the story, Turner doesn't actually start his rebellion, despite all the horrible things he's witnessed, until he himself is the victim of violence from his master. And for someone who's supposed to be a man of God, it sure seems like he's starting this rebellion for very selfish reasons. And when he finally rises up and kills Army Hammer, the last shot we see of the two of them, they're on opposite sides of a room with a stained glass cross window in the background. Obvious symbolism is obvious. So it sure seems like he's doing what God wants him to do, or at least he believes he is, even though his rebellion is at least in part selfishly motivated. So while the movie is certainly portraying Turner as a hero, they're not quite going so far as to put him up on a pedestal. And after he kills his master, the very next thing we see is he goes outside around behind the house and throws up. And when that happened, I was sarcastically thinking, thank you, that was very necessary. But after thinking about it for a minute, you know, it actually kind of was. Throughout the film, we constantly see these slave owners doing the unthinkable and treating their fellow human beings like these subhuman animals and not showing any remorse or regret whatsoever. And in that moment when, you know, the dude is chiseling out the slave's teeth so he can force feed him, the only reaction he's showing is just that he's bothered by the inconvenience of it all, that he has to take time out of his busy schedule to discipline these uppity slaves again, and it's just fucking horrifying. And then you have Turner, who also has to do some pretty horrifying things. He has to commit murder in order to free himself and his fellow slaves. And he and his followers, well, the movie kinda shies away from this a bit, they did not just kill men, they killed women and children as well. They pretty much killed indiscriminately. And while one could certainly argue that their actions may have been justified, you could also see how what they did could make them just as monstrous as the very people they were trying to overthrow. And I honestly don't know if this is an accurate representation of the real Nat Turner, but at least in the movie, when Turner has to commit these horrible acts and take someone else's life in order to save his own, he is so horrified by what he has to do that he just, his body can't handle it and he just loses his lunch right there. Which I thought was very interesting, that even though he has to commit these monstrous acts, he has not allowed himself to become the monster. He's still just barely holding on to his humanity. So how do I want to wrap this up? up. It's okay. I mean, it's it's got its issues. It certainly did not live up to the hype by any means, but it's not a bad movie at all. It's got a lot of good things working for it, and it is telling a very important story, even if it's not telling it as well as it could. And I certainly would not pay full price for it, but I would say it's worth a matinee. And that about wraps it up for The Birth of a Nation 2016. So until next time, take care.